Go ahead. What week is this in your season? It says it right oh, there on the top. Says season week two. Potato head uh, beat so and so. What are you talking Joe about? So and so. It's going too damn fast. So Ayo keep up KB with it. Beat Joe Boo. What? Slaughtered him. What? He beat just by one. F S O U beat Peyton. Damn, VA kid beat the F out of Clam Hunter. Yo, Clam Hunter got better though. Already beat AJ by a lot. Mm hmm. Who's this next one? Damn, Unstoppable. Oh, beat the yeah, computer. Yeah, CPU. Oh, you want some two? Got a wing, no, KD no, no, unit. That, that was CPU though. That oh. was CPU. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Shammer beat the computer. Mr. Jangles beat Dreadheadish. Yeah, yeah, Jangles did By take care lot. of that. Yeah, he took care of Dreadheadish. Damn, Trayvon, you beat the F out of you need Seattle. No, 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 no. I think that was the computer. That was the computer. Okay. That's before. That's before. I think he. I don't know. I'm not sure. I gotta figure that this out. 360 beat the Kevin Jackson. Yo, Kevin Jackson is a Idiot fucking boy bum, spit though. On it. Oh, that's computer. What? Um, G Maya barely beat MP. MP Mojo Jojo. Jojo. Oh Why shit! Why beat the Why fuck out this dude, man? But listen. I'm gonna tell you this right now. The Why Kevin did Jackson. Go through it so fast and then tell me to read it. Because you should, you should be used to it by now. But the Kevin Jackson is a bum. I just want you to know that the Kevin Jackson. Okay. That nigga garbage. But um, other than the that. New Village bicycle. No, nah, he he in the Village bicycle. I think yeah. that he will. No, nah, no, nah, not yet. He may be because all you want some too is coming for butt cheeks. Oh. So that may be a situation where we will find out. Cause okay. I, I don't know who really is the New Village bicycle. We gotta do a vote on it. It's not a vote. Who has the most losses? Yeah, but that's not what it is. You can lose and lose close games and not be the Village Bicycle. Yeah, but if you're losing all your games, whether they're close or not, you should be the Village Bicycle. Nah, nah. A lot, a lot of people lose games that, you know, if you're getting blown the fuck out, like, oh, you want some to earn that name. In the first season, in uh -huh. 13, he was losing by an average of 60 points. Oh, my God. So, a lot has changed since then. So, he deserved what he got? Yeah, like, right now, he he's earned his way. The same thing with this guy, Clem Hunter. I remember when I first started playing Clem Hunter, this dude was shittier than a baby's diaper. Uh-huh. But he's shown improvement in this game, as you'll see. Okay. You know what I'm saying? This game is going to be going on. So, guys, stay tuned. Watch it. See what's happening. Um, as far as people trying to join the league, if you've already been in the league yes. and have left for any other reason, whatever, it's up to the people that's in the league if you can be reinstated. Why? Because it's, it's their league. Yeah, but there's too many people in the league for it's you a to vote. give. It's a vote. They can vote on somebody returning. Just like anything else that you have when you have you've a board. Always, you've always done it like that? Yeah, basically. It, it's a people's league. So if somebody leaves and just say, yeah, I'm leaving, and then you want to just come back, you don't just let somebody back so in. So you don't have any rules on that. Any rules on what? On quitting. Quitting what? What are you talking quitting about? Quitting the league. Yeah, the, the, the rule is that you have to wait until another league is started or the people that are in the league can vote you back in. Do, you mean during the, the owners, same, their franchise? Yeah, yeah, during, during the, the same, same season, during the same season. If their spot hasn't been taken, yeah, pretty much the same way it is done in the NFL. The league owners, who these guys are, okay, would vote on if a person can return. All right, that's pretty much how it goes. In anything, you know, what I'm saying any kind of situation where everybody, I have what do I have right now? I have like 28 owners. Okay, they should be able to decide whether somebody else becomes an owner that left. That's just the way it goes. Like anything else, you don't just keep on like a guy just can't leave. And then, oh, yeah, I feel like coming back this week. And then he just comes back in when other people are waiting to come in. Okay. That's pretty much how it goes. It's got to be fair. I've always tried to make it fair. So that's that's on them and, uh, you know, Potato Head and the rest of the guys if other people want to return. But besides that point, I know you guys have heard that. Um, why did it start lagging about the running back for six? It's fucking cocksucker fucking uh, Clam Hunter. But um, pretty much I wanted to talk about the whole RG3 um, Shanahan thing. Um, mm -hmm. I... Like I said, I know I know that Shannon had had problems with Donovan McNabb. Okay. Um, and and and, it made, and, and I saw how adamant. Uh, look at RG three just fumbled, and I recovered it in the end zone. But RG three is a fucking piece of shit. Not, it's funny that we're talking about him because he's fumbling the ball right there. But Michael Irvin was very very. I'm sorry, his name is Bob, isn't it? Oh, oh, Robert, whichever one, Bob, something. Okay. Um, Michael Irvin was very very adamant and angry about Bob being benched. Yes. And he basically tried to compare it to uh, Andrew Luck. And if Andrew Luck was in the same situation, would it have gone down the same way? Mm -hmm. um, looking at it from that point of view, people will be quick to say that Mike Shanahan is a prejudiced person. Okay. Um, that's just looking at it at face value. Me, personally, I don't think that he's... Like, like I said, do I think that he's bought and or sold a slave within the past two months? Yes. Wow. Do I think that it's that that's what drove him to do what he's doing to RG3? No. I don't think race has anything to do with this. RG3. Absolutely nothing. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. Look, 
RG3 got hurt, a major surgery, right? Okay. When he stayed in that game when they were playing Seattle and he stayed in too long mm -hmm. because Mike Shanahan wanted to see what he got, that was Mike Shanahan trying to see how far he can go, right? Okay. Everybody came out and said, yo, you know, Mike Shanahan shouldn't have kept him in. He should have been smarter as a coach. You know, he, blase, whatever. Okay. Because of that, that's why Mike Shanahan didn't let him play a preseason game. Now, that was a double-edged sword because that's stupid to not play, make him play a game that doesn't count, mm -hmm. to see how he's doing, and then put him into the fire in a regular season game. That was stupid on Mike Shanahan's part. Yes. Him benching Bob right now, it comes off stupid because it should have been done earlier. Exactly. Do I think he's trying to get fired? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Do I think in this regard that he's showing that it's a race issue? No, I don't. Everybody is always quick to go to the race card. Is Michael Irvin quick to go to the race card? I can't say that. that. That's no, who, no, no. That's no, no. Made okay. The comment. Okay, listen. I can't say that about Michael and Irving. He's the one that's saying okay. it. That's not Listen. something that everyone is saying. That's what Michael Irving is saying. No, but but, but what I'm saying is is everybody's feeding off of that and people are joining in on that. De De Deion Sanders, you know what I'm saying, primetime wanted to slow him down a little bit because of other facts and mm -hmm. extenuating circumstances. What I'm saying is this I love Michael Irvin and what he brings to the table as a football player and as a motivator. Did he smoke crack in excess? Yes, he did. But was he a great player? And a great teammate and a great motivator? Mm -hmm. Yes, he was. Did he stand up for the Afro-American uh, re wide receivers in the league at that time with that Jimmy Jones era? Yes, he did in Dallas. Okay. Him saying that is going to come off as what, what everybody's trying to blame Mike Shanahan for being. But was RG3 doing everything he was supposed to do as a quarterback? No. Was he, was he doing everything... In the film study room, like like the other t the other teammates talk. He wasn't being focused. He was all focused on all in for week one. Mm -hmm. People got to look at that. You got to look at it from every angle. Listen, Riley Cooper is prejudiced. Mm -hmm. Because I saw the video and how he delivered what he said. No matter what that man says, he's prejudiced. He can't say nothing. It's in the fucking... Bro... It's written all over the world, all, all over the wall. Mike Shanahan, has he bought and also sold a slave within the last two minutes? Yes. But does that contribute to what he's doing to RG3? I don't believe so. Because I think RG3 contributed to what happened to him. Let me ask you this, though. Ultimately, at the end of the day, is it up to the quarterback whether he <clears throat> plays or is it up to the uh, head coach whether he plays? It's up to the head coach. That's what his job is. Okay. So, if he wants to sit RG3, he could have sat RG3 any time in the season. Remember, RG3 was scoring most of his points in garbage time. Mm -hmm. It was all garbage time. I have him as my starting quarterback in fantasy. I know. It was always garbage time. Listen, the thing that I, I, I don't want everybody to get up in arms about as I throw this pick to Clem Hunter, I don't want them to think that, yes, listen, Donovan McNabb was very upset with the way Mike Shanahan treated him. Donovan McNabb was what also... What specifically was he saying that Mike Shanahan did? He was saying that Mike Donovan. Shanahan didn't treat him properly. Basically, it was a treatment aspect. The way that he the way that he set it up... Meaning he didn't get treated like a QB of a team is supposed to get treated. Basically, as a leader of men. He didn't get treated as, in his words, how a quarterback of another race would have been treated. That's basically what he was trying to say, but in a lack oh, of better okay. words. Yeah, so he kind of created a thing. Albert Hainsworth... With the way Albert, with, with the way Mark Shanahan treated him, a fat D tackle, he kind of made him have to redo con reconditioning tests and a lot of things like that. It's a lot of things that can be that can be said about Mike Shanahan being questionable as a prejudiced person from other athletes other than the QB. Uh -huh. What I'm saying is this: there are also other people that have said that he's given them a chance to succeed in the league. So I don't want to be so quick to call somebody out for being something that they're not because. RG3, in my opinion, didn't prepare as well as he should have. That's what I'm saying. Listen, you got to understand, that's why I have a problem with Cam Newton, the way he stands in the pocket. Mm -hmm. Because Cam Newton is very, very agile and very, very athletic. But he stands like an erected penis in the pocket. That's not the coach's fault. That's not Ron Rivera. That's Cam Newton. Yeah, but you can't even really compare Cam Newton to RG3 in this situation because Cam Newton's not coming off of the surgery. 
So if he's playing like crap, he's playing like crap. But when your when your player is has that type of major surgery, you're talking about a major major surgery. Okay. To a joint that has poor healing when compared to other joints in the body. Okay. Then you don't play him in a regular game. Of course, he was practicing. You mean in the preseason? Excuse me, in the preseason. You don't play him in a game against another defense because his defense, maybe they're not going as hard. I don't know what happened in the training and the practice camp and everything else. But but my issue that I have with watching it is they, they put so much emphasis on, you know, franchise QB and how things look when after that first game, he doesn't play any preseason. He plays that first game, and he's not really doing that great. He shouldn't have played the second game because you see that he lacks that burst. He lacks what it is that that distinguishes him from any other QB, which is that burst of speed, and he has not shown it all season. Okay. Well, so well, you well, need that to, is, instead of saying, you know what, how it looks and everything me, else, that? he plays that first game, you know what, you're not healthy, let's take off another week. Yeah, but but that that's not that that never and I happens. Know, and I know that it never happens, but changes need to be made because these guys are getting they're okay. getting hit lower. There's okay. going to be a lot of knees. Okay, you're going to have to do something a little bit different. You got to right. protect him. All right, look, look, this, this is what the problem is that 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 you have to understand. Doctor Andrews, who cleared him, is a well-known, renowned doctor. I'm not saying that. His so he's knees, cleared. So you can't bench him. I'm not saying that. Oh, you that's the rule. No, that, that's what if you. What are you benching him for? If the do- the the doctors and the medical staff cleared him, what Let are me you? Let me ask you this: the medical staff, meaning the doctor who performed the surgery. No, the doctors of the Redskins. Doctor Andrews performed the surgery, but the staff and Doctor Andrews cleared him. They so cleared him medically. Now, that, did his physical trainers, physical phys- therapists, yeah. athletic trainers, did they also clear him? No, do, do they also that, that, have to clear him? You that, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but that, but that that's not part of the NFL clearance. When he he came off an ACL, what I'm asking, yeah, but that's like, what I'm saying. He came off an ACL injury, and the doctor that performed the surgery that looked at his X rays and uh-huh. everything else and checked to make sure that the healing was proper. Let me give said you, that let me, he said that he was ready to go. Let me give you an example. I've worked with people who have had surgeries on their knees, and they go to a skilled nursing facility on a temporary basis until they're ready to go home. During that time. Let's say four weeks in, they'll go back to the doctor and the doctor will say, you know what? That surgery is healed nicely. You are cleared to go home. But guess what? That person can't go up and down the stairs. They can't walk without a roller yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. There's other aspects to going home than just the knee being healed. Exactly. So my question is, because again, I'm new to football. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Just because the surgeon said and the medical staff said that the knee is healed. Shouldn't there be more, especially when it comes to a knee, shouldn't there be more that you have to go through in order to, for, for an actual clearance to play? No, but other that, than but, just that medical health. Yeah, but that, but that, like but, somebody but, but you, should put you, him on, on no, a certain but, but type but you, of testing. But, but that's what I'm saying. You just you have to understand that's what he's being cleared to do. He's not being cleared to go home. He's being cleared to play football. Which means that he should go through even more of a clearance, even more of a, of a, a clearance of a by who? checklist. He should. His the physical therapists there, the athletic trainers who are there, okay, who have trained with him prior to the injury, they know what he can and cannot do, and yeah. if they are testing him with all these agility things, the speed, all of the little training things that they do, and he's not where he was, then he even yes he got medical clearance. Yeah, but that's but what I'm saying. he still shouldn't he, play until he's back to where he was. He had a series where he was training, and the man was cutting and doing everything that he can do on the knee. So then that leads to my other theory I'm thinking in my head. What? That mentally, he's not prepared. For whatever okay, reason, listen. something's going on. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Okay, but yeah. Something might be going on with him mentally because okay. he is not... Whatever he might have done in the training, he's not doing that on the field. Okay, but that's what I'm saying. See, you you have an opinion about his burst. I saw him play, and I saw that he could still run. I think that there was something just about the actual offense that he was running. Mm-hmm. RG3 RG3 can still run. RG, listen, I watched him run and outrun people. It, he just doesn't do it as often. I don't know if he's not as confident in his knee. 
I don't know what the fuck he's doing. That's what I'm saying. And All I know, times... yeah, but you're saying his burst. I'm telling you that this man, he doesn't take... The one thing that I'll give you and Skip Bayless and all these guys, he doesn't take off as fast. That's he, what I mean. But he, but but he can outrun. Like he's still, he's still running fast. I mean, he I'm not saying that he's not running fast. But what I'm saying is, when you take somebody who has a certain a certain skill set, and you take away even a little piece of that skill set, even though they have 99 percent of everything else, if they're missing that one little piece, then that changes their whole their whole capability. And something is going on with, in his head where he's favoring that knee. He's not doing what he was doing before. Yeah, but that, but he's see, just, that's, he's just see, not but, doing what he was. See, doing but that's before. what I'm saying. See, see, you, a lot of people are focusing on his knee. What I'm focusing on is his preparation. That's the problem that I have with Michael Irvin. Uh -huh. I don't think RG three was preparing the same because when, when you come off of it, last, yes, when, did when did you last he became a diva. Listen, I can see you can see certain athletes that play with, like, that chip on their shoulder mm -hmm. and that they prepare hard. What I'm telling you is this. I understand that RG3 is this and whatever like that, but I just think he got caught up with, with, with himself, with him being the RG3. Now he's Bob to everybody, but he, he was caught up in being RG3, and that's what I believe his problem is. He doesn't think, listen... A lot of his teammates that didn't side with him during the season when all these things were going on, mm -hmm. and he was wondering, like, where's everybody else? Those are the same people that he ignored when he was RG3 last year. So what I'm saying what is... What do you when, mean by he ignored? What was he doing? Like, he does, he, he wasn't as open as other QBs are with, their, with his teammates. He wasn't as, like, friendly and spoke to everybody, according to people in his locker room. Mm -hmm. Now that he's being humbled because he's shitty and his QBR has dropped to the lowest... You know, from from back to back years in NFL history, according to stats, now he wants to be everybody's friend. This is what I'm saying. It takes things like this to humble some people to understand that. Listen, even when you're on top, that's the time when you shouldn't be a dick, because when you're on top and you're a dick and you fall, you're gonna fall hard, and that's what's happening to him. Because people could say Mike Shanahan is a vicious racist. He's part of the KKK. He has an ID card for the KKK. Is Whatever. That what people are saying? I don't know what people are saying. I'm just saying that I understand that he may look the part mm -hmm. as a guy that may have lynched a couple of blacks in his lifetime. Mm -hmm. In Mike Shanahan, I understand that Michael Irvin is upset, but I also have to take into consideration what was RG3 doing. Mm -hmm. He didn't look good, so it's not like it's not justified. It's just the fact of the way that Mike Shanahan is doing it. And the fact that he just wants to be fired. Because if you look at Why Mike... Why do you say he wants to be fired? Because that's what all the skeptics are saying. Based on what he's doing, he's setting it up to be fired. Because they're trying to find a loophole. Dan Snyder's trying to find a loophole in this contract. To not pay him. To not pay him, according to sources. But what is... So they're saying that this move to bench RG3... Bob, Bob, yeah. To bench Bob... That they're do he's doing it to be fired. Yes. So he thinks that he's doing the wrong thing. Who thinks that he's doing the wrong thing? Um, Shanahan. You say you saying that Shanahan thinks that he's doing the wrong thing? Yeah, like he's purposely trying to do the wrong thing. Put it, put it, put it like this: Everybody that's involved in the situation is saying that everything that he's doing is setting it up as a man that's trying to be fired. Because if you're fired, you keep the money. If you walk away, you don't get the money. Okay. So he's trying to pick, remember Dan Snyder and RG three are very close. The owner and RG three are very very close. That's why he was given it's a mistake. But go ahead. Yeah, but that's why he was given the treatment he was given. So, right now, he either way, Mike Shanahan isn't coming back. But but the Redskins are trying to figure out a way to get rid of him. You understand what I'm saying? Like, Mike Shanahan is not the, like I said before in the previous video, how he's not a money, Bill Belichick. How much money are we talking about? Seven million dollars a year. So, how much money would they owe him if they, if they were to fire him right now? That's what they're looking for. If, if you're fired, Sometimes you pay everything. If you're fired, you pay everything. You pay everything that the contract is everything worth. Everything that the contract is worth, if you're fired. Wow, do you know how many more years he had on the I contract? don't know how many more years, but I'm going to tell you this. The owner of the Jets wouldn't cut Sanchez because they had him guaranteed money. So they'd rather have him sit there wearing his female his female headband on the sideline, even though they knew that he wasn't going to play, than just let him go away and pay him. Because as an owner, you don't want to just give people millions of dollars. Yeah. So you'd rather humiliate them and keep them there. And that's why... 
Shanahan is basically saying, yo, look, whatever, I'm going to bench Bob, fire me. But I can't go the route of saying that he's prejudiced for doing it because I don't see the effort in RG3 and what he's doing. You can't go out there and throw 443 yards against Kansas City or whatever the fuck you did and not do it. You know what I'm saying? Like I remember earlier in the season you were saying that um, they're not running plays. Yeah, like the... Is yeah, yeah. That on yes, the Yes, that's on the coaching coach? staff. Coaching staff. That's on the coaching staff. So, they, yes, you're yes. saying that this whole entire season has basically been a sabotage on Shanahan's part. I'm not sure I want to go that far as sabotage, but what I'm saying is they want RG3 to be something that he's not. RG3 is not a pocket passer. Okay. And that's the office they want to run. And does Kirk Cousins, who's being put in, fit that criteria? Yes, he does. He wants a pocket passer, Mike Shanahan. Okay. He had John Elway. One of the greats. He he doesn't want this whole flashy Afro-American running shit. He wants a pocket passer, him and his son. So it doesn't apply the same way because Mike Shanahan is not a player's coach. He's not a, um, you know, a, a, a Sean Payton with, with the Saints. Well, how him yeah, and Drew like Brees is. If, if RG3 had Sean Payton, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Why? Because Sean Payton would have looked into it more to see if he was healthy enough to play and have more concern for him as an individual. Remember, when Drew Brees was signed with the Saints, mm-hmm. he was coming off of a major shoulder injury that most doctors and professionals said he would never recover from. And wow. Sean Payton took a chance on him because he's looking at the individual. Now, the one thing that Michael Irvin says that makes sense, the quarterback is supposed to get preferential treatment. Yes. But that's not the situation here. The situation is, when he's getting that treatment... What is he doing with it on the field? Yes, guys are going to act like they're above the team because it's natural that the QB is going to do that. But what are you doing on the field? Let me ask you a question. You mentioned just now that his uh, rela- he has a relationship with the owner. Is that normal for the... I'm going to be honest with you. That's not a very typical thing with Dan Snyder, what he's doing there. Mm-hmm. It's not because you don't want to involve that. It's business. So you want to like keep your distance as an owner? Yeah. But RG3 came out of Baylor so electrifying that they created that relationship. And the owner doesn't deny that, that they have a relationship like that. So that's kind of iffy because now whatever head coach you bring in there, they're going to always say he could always talk to the owner. So it's exactly. very, very... That's why you got to bring in a coach that don't give a fuck. Like a John Gruden, a Chucky. You know what I'm saying? A guy that doesn't See, give a fuck. I always look at, at football as the head coach is the parent and his players are the kids. Okay. And and older kids. So while you want to give them certain freedoms as a head coach, you still have to you still have to, you know, lie down the law, set certain rules and okay. keep control of them. I agree. But while you, giving them But there's freedoms. a certain type of man that does that. And a man that but a man like Mike Tomlin, head. listen, listen. Mike Tomlin may jump out into the middle of the field and do a hurdle, but that man is a leader of men. Mike Shanahan doesn't he seems like a self-conscious guy, like he's worried about too much shit. If Mike Tomlin was the coach of the Redskins, RG3 would be in his place and be a quarterback and do what he's supposed to do. And to finish my thought, the the owner now should be more like a grandparent. You give them the money, but you back off when it comes to discipline and, you know, the parent making the rules. And that's the way the relationship should be. If a player can go around the head coach and talk to the owner... Now you have discord. You have unrest in the whole entire team. It can't work that way. I, I don't. There's okay. a lot. There's a lot of factors going on with this whole thing. But ultimately, if somebody is, if somebody wants to be fired and they're sabotaging your whole season, like you got, you got to fire them because you got to look at the bigger picture. You need now. You need to get a new head coach in there. The head coach has to get used to your players. You might have to cut some players and add other players. Then you have everybody has to learn the new plays and everything else. And you have fans who want to see a win. So instead of playing all these games and finding loopholes and everything else, cut it, cut it, and and end it now. Yeah, but 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 what I'm saying is, you, it, it's easier said than done, because when you're paying somebody seven million dollars, and you could let them, you could let your people find out how you can pay them less because you don't like what they did, it's more advantageous to him to save the money. Because if he fires shit... Listen, the season's over. Mm-hmm. All they can do at this point is let Kirk Cousins go out there. How many more? This is the last week? Last week of what? We're, we're in week 15? Yeah, so it's two more weeks. Two more weeks? 
The biggest thing that they can do is try to make Kirk Cousins play well mm-hmm. and get a draft pick for him because they lost a lot to get RG3. That's what that's what the purpose is right now. So Mike Shanahan will be fired, but firing him right now will be premature. Because so they're it, gonna wait until after week sixteen. No, they. If I'm pretty sure right now, if Dan Snyder finds a loophole tonight, he'll be fired tonight. But it comes a point where you just don't want to pay someone to leave. Mm-hmm. You want to make him sit there because right now this is fucking up his wannabe legacy. This is embarrassing to Mike Shanahan. Well, to me, what would be even worse is if he gets another job in the NFL. He won't get another job in the NFL. Because I doubt that anybody would... He fucked over... Like, according to what they're saying, he's done it to Donovan McNabb, Mm -hmm. RG3, Albert Hainsworth. It's all people of color. And I'm not blaming him for doing it, but it seems to be a trend. And that's what I'm saying. You have to at least fuck over one Caucasian. You can't just be fucking over all Afro-Americans. And that's where he's... Right now. All the Caucasians are doing the right thing. That may be the case. That's what I'm saying. I don't believe that this man's a racist. Or prejudiced. Just but that, that he but that's what it is for this video, guys. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. That's my opinion. I don't think that he is what everybody is making him out to be. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. One love.